Cancer, welcome to your month in review for April. What's up? What's going on? Show me Cancer, please, in April. Show me Cancer in April. Show me Cancer, please, in April. Like always. Take it resonates, leave it does not, yeah? These are general collective readings, not one-to-one -one private, which is to say they may not resonate. And as frustrating as that is, it's also normal. Check out the placements, yeah? What's going on, please? What's going on, please, for Cancer in April? Let's do one more. Show me Cancer in April, please. Okay. Oh, goodness, we got all sorts of stuff kicking off in the background. We've got lawnmowers. Oh, my. We've got roof repair. A uh, couple houses down. Oh, my, yes. <sighs> busy, busy. Two of swords. The Empress. Nine of Cups. There's some confusion here, but for the most part, you seem to have an idea of who you are, and that's lovely. Wonderful. We'll see what that's about. But the Empress, Nine of Cups, the idea is uh, I feel pretty darn good. I like being me, and that's always a good feeling. King of Wands, Temperance, Magician, someone likes you too, honey. <laughs> okay, we now have another figure that clearly entered the board. So in that case, as we go along, reverse those energies as you see fit. Okay, further out, Ten of Wands, the world, Eight of Cups. I have a cycle coming to a close. It may or may not be connected to this. I have not a clue. But you're saying there is something about the hardship or the hard days are over. Uh, that you're fine. You're good. You gave it up willfully. You're walking away from something that says, I'm carrying this, and I don't need to. Freedom. Emotional freedom, bare minimal. <laughs> you know, because you're like, I don't, why am I carrying this? Cycle it. Yeah, it's nice when people have those moments, right? <laughs> they can be so, uh, just so relieving, of course, but then the realization of, wait a minute, I was carrying what? For how long? And I'm not into it. It doesn't personally mean anything to me. Hmm. <laughs> Isn't that such a good feeling? I, you haven't quite gotten there yet. This is further out to April. But you will. It's probably already on your mind or with your kind of soul, if you will, or your spirit uh, now. But you'll get there. And that could be what this confusing element is. Because you're saying you otherwise pride yourself on being you. The Empress in the Nine of Cups. Someone who loves themselves. And more often than not feels empowered. And that means knowing who you are. Which means you also know by extent what you can give to others and mean it. That's what the whole point of being the Emperor and Empress is. Ultimately their goal is to serve others. But that's because they're coming from an empowered place that says it's within my power to do so. Not everybody else can serve others. And you have to be strong to do this. You have to have a strong sense of self. And you have to know that you love yourself in order to help or serve others. Because you can step into the role, not step away from it. You understand? So they can't be selfish by nature. They have to be willing to make difficult decisions to serve others and to serve themselves. You're saying you actually kind of like being you. And that's a good thing. So let's go ahead and start with that Two of Swords. I want to see what's kind of like on your mind in terms of I should probably clear this up. After all, if I'm empowered, I should be able to handle this. I agree. Let's see that Two of Swords, please. Two of Swords. Everybody experiences it from time to time. We just don't want to get lost in it. At some point, we got to take the blindfold off and see things for what they are. You know? People can hang out in that Two of Swords, I don't know, for a long time. And if you're empowered, again, that's anti-policy. Two of Swords is anti-policy, <laughs> if you're an emperor and empress. Let's do that Two of Swords, please. Show me that Two of Swords. Show me that Two of Swords. Oh, we got the power stall going, too. Oh, yes. Oh, it's an active... Well, it's not a beautiful day in the neighborhood, but it's an active day. Two of Swords. We got the Seven of Pentacles, Two of Swords, Two of Swords, Three of Pentacles. Okay. Okay, so we're practically looking at a situation, possibly an environment that's showing up 3D, and we're like, what is the purpose of this? And it's a good question, too, because when I see things like that, I'm also like, what's the purpose of this? <laughs> so I completely understand this. You're two of swords, and you're like, I need to make a decision on this. That, that's you right now, the cancer I'm looking at. I need to make a decision on this. You're like, I've allowed this to settle way too long. It's time to start making decisions, y'all. 
So that's where we are in a situation that is indeed a situation, a circumstance, job, work, a connection. I don't know. Other people are involved, but that's not really the point. The point is, is that you're saying it's stagnant. This thing, whatever this project is, whatever this work is, whatever this environment is, again, 3D energy environment as well, is stagnant as hell. There ain't nothing new on the scene. Nothing is growing. Everybody's doing their parts, but nothing's improving. Hmm. 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 And you're like, it's not always the most fulfilling contractual work between myself and a couple other folks. This could be a group thing. I don't know. But you're saying this is not working for me. It doesn't have much function attached to it that says profitable. It's stagnant. And you don't honestly see it getting any better. So that's the thing about Seven of Pentacles, guys. Enough time has passed to understand if something still has potential in terms of growth, or it doesn't. And there's a lot of hands that rest on this particular Seven of Pentacles. And it's like, it's still not clear if this has got somewhere to go. So I think the answer here is no. That's what you're thinking, right? But you're like, how to handle that though? What does that mean? I've been looking around. The cooperation's on point between yourself, bare minimum with someone else. Could be a group of folks, but you're saying it doesn't seem to go anywhere and it doesn't get any better. It's kind of stagnant, it's kind of boring, it's kind of dull. I wonder what your decision will be. Let's see. Let's check you out. Let's see that Empress. It's environmental, guys. Like I said, it's kind of like an all-hands-on-deck kind of vibe right there. But you're like, no matter how many hands, it still kind of more or less stays the same. All right. Let's see that Empress. Show me the Empress. Show me the Empress, please. Yeah, like I said, you are eventually going to answer that question anyway. <laughs> yeah, if we don't have much love for it anymore. <laughs> much heart space for it, or hope for it, or sense of feeling for it. And so for water signs, when you start losing feeling for something in terms of its application to you in your life and why you keep it, you start thinking about worlds, okay? All right, what's going on? Let's check you out. Eight of Cups, there it is again, it's consistent. Temperance and the Two of Cups, I know. And this is what you're trying to figure out, what, what I just said, the water process. How do you know you're looking at a water sign? When it comes to these kind of life decisions, we consult our emotions first. And that's exactly what you're asking. How do I feel about this exactly? <laughs> and you're saying, and it looks like a rational, emotional-based discussion that you're having with yourself, that while you understand more than one person's feelings are involved in this, clearly, and you respect that. You're saying you yourself personally don't want to attach your name to this anymore. And that's coming from an empowered place. So I want you to trust that. That tells me you have experience, but you're also trying to show the sensitivity. I told you this was an all hands on deck type of thing. I don't know how else to explain that. And while it might mean a lot to others and the people who contribute, you're also saying for you personally, it has nowhere to go. It has no more emotional meaning to you. And you've tried. You've tried. Temperance is here. It's the Eight of Cups. But the whole point of temperance, guys, let me explain this because I don't know how this comes up in tarot. Uh, to me, it's obvious. But it's not always to other people. Temperance doesn't mean you force yourself to feel better about a situation. Okay. Temperance means that you did the internal work and you understand a hard truth as well as a positive one. You have to take responsibility for either. So if you've ever truly temperanced a situation or connection or work function or whatever, and you're like, how do I feel about this exactly? The results might be that you've checked in with yourself and you still feel good about it. Or you understand it's no longer for you. Temperance suggests whatever the results are, you take responsibility or ownership of them. So while you acknowledge there's goodwill between yourself and whoever else is in here in this construct... You're saying you yourself personally are no longer satisfied by this. And you learned that via temperance. So you gave this time. You gave them this plenty. And I saw it here with the Two of Swords twice. Eventually, something's going to have to win. So you've checked in with yourself. You see the situation for what it is. You understand how you personally feel about it. What's the execution going to be? Well, I think we, 
I think we have an idea. <laughs> I do. So I like how you are giving consideration to the other folks who are in this with you, whatever this is. Again, could be work projects, some sort of family dynamic I'm not entirely sure of, uh, where there's actual 3D constructive work. You've taken that into consideration, but you're like, is that enough for me personally to continue to involve myself? And the answer seems to be no. So again, I think you're covering all your bases here, which is very much a water thing. Uh, let's go on over here to the Nine of Cups. Show me that Nine of Cups, please. Show me that Nine of Cups. Yeah, no. For some of you, the 28th is important. I do not know why. Let's see that Nine of Cups. Show me that Nine of Cups. Show me that Nine of Cups. Show me that Nine of Cups, please. Show me that Nine of Cups, please. Show me that Nine of Cups. Yours is different. The water signs did great. Um, I feel like I've covered a lot of repeating terrain with the earth and fire signs, which is no disrespect. That's just what I saw. But the water signs, you guys are, you're showing me some freshness. It's like, here's some original thoughts. This is what I'm working with now. I like it. It's great. Everybody's doing so good. Um, it, well, at least for our crew, you know. <laughs> I haven't gotten to the air signs yet. And again, once more, it's not a competition. It's just, it's refreshing. Okay, it's just refreshing. The Four of Cups, yeah, Disappointment, The Lovers, Nine of Swords. Okay, we're going to pull ourselves aside here for just a second. As I just got done saying, you guys have been showing me different stuff. And you have. You just kind of switch gears on me real quick. <laughs> you said, you're like, okay, we covered that. Now, this is so you. This is so cancer. You're like, what? What do you mean, what? You know exactly what you did. You just shifted gears on me and you're like, now adjust. I'm not asking for a lot, Christina. All I did was switch a gear. Keep up. Seriously. Well, you have emotional gears, honey. Cancer has many of them. All right? So when you do that thing where you're just doing a prop shift, it's changing topics. Yeah. But it's still in the appreciation of feeling. And now we have some stress here as well. So Nine of Cups, literally pulling yourself aside as an individual, your place of empowerment, what this situation's about, we've got that. I think we do. Hopefully we're all caught up. And again, if it doesn't make sense to you, it's because it doesn't resonate. That's it. Now, this portion may or may not as well. Uh, so here we have the strong sense of individual, Nine of Cups, me personally, how I feel about myself, how I love myself, etc. You're saying that you are still experiencing to this day some critical disappointment between yourself and a strong connection. The lovers is here. And it says it still stresses you out. You're saying you love this connection like you love yourself. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. That's what the Nine of Cups is, guys. It's a lesser form of wish fulfillment. Because I love myself, I want to give myself these things. You're saying that you love a connection like you love yourself, but that you're hurt by it, disappointed by it, and that there's upset that's outstanding between you two. It looks like it's unresolved. You know this, but it's on an internal space. I don't see you talking about it. <clears throat> I also don't see you working through it. Okay? It's kind of there like a migraine's there. It just kind of sits there. And when it clears up is when it clears up, you know, but that's what happens when we don't actively heal. It's, I'd say it's on your mind and it is nine of swords. Okay. It's uncomfortably on your mind and it sits uncomfortably in your heart. What you're going to do with this, I don't know. I just know that it's there. Okay. We have, uh, <clears throat> apologies. We have some leftover aches and pains with somebody and, um, it's a lot. But it's also unresolved. So like I said, it's kind of sitting there like a migraine that won't clear up. Except it's in your heart. And a little bit in your head, too. I like your approach to this. The answer is clearly before you over here. We'll get there. Okay? This one, I don't see an answer to yet. And it may not be. So just be prepared for that. Only so much is going to get covered in April anyway. I just know it's sitting with you. Okay. Let's keep on keeping on. Let's jump on over here to, I'm kind of curious about this spike of energy. Some of it's yours, some of it's not. Let's see that King of Wands, please. At least I believe so. You already evoked temperance. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that back to you. Let's see that King of Wands. Show me that King of Wands, please. Show me that King of Wands. The Four of Wands. Three of Wands. The Nine of Wands. Oh, yes. And 
Interesting. I'm going to do temperance real quick. That's all wand. It's all fire. It's all very passionate and frustrated at the same time. Passionate frustration, 100%. I'm very passionate about this, but it also frustrates me simultaneously. What is this in reflection of specifically who with that four of wands? Is this our unresolved lover issue that we're looking at? Show me temperance, please. It's like it, you hate how much it drives you crazy. Show me temperance, please. Show me temperance, please. Show me temperance, please. I know it wasn't just you in there. But you're saying someone provokes really strong reactions from you that say fire, passionate, and frustrated. They're not that far apart. They're really not. <laughs> They're really not that far apart. Show me temperance, please. There's that nine of cups again. Yeah, it's about them. Okay. Page of Cups, the Ten of Pentacles, you know. There's something in here about this lover situation that provokes a lot of feelings in you. Some of them are quite natural. Like I said, you love this connection the way you love yourself. Um, it's strong. It's with you. But like I said, it, it feels unresolved because it is. It hasn't completely left you, at least energetically. And it doesn't seem to be with you physically, though, either. As far as I can tell, things with this have are stamped currently with unresolved. There are times when you want to open up towards it, and there's times when you just remind yourself to get and block it. That's where that frustration is coming in. But when you reflect on this person, your energy spikes in ways that are both positive as well as negative. Again, the unresolved thing. And so what I'm looking for here is I was hoping to see with temperance a form of healing. And you're like, I am healing. What I do is that I turn my emotions back around and focus on my foundation. And then, then that calms me down. So I don't actually see you addressing this lover and any of the unresolved uh, hangups there between you two. The pain as far as the mental frustration and the passionate frustration is still hanging in the air. Um, there's a lot of things said and not said and done and also not done. And it's kind of like, in, instead of taking your temperance and reflecting on it, like you did in this situation, you take it back to foundation and say, you know what? This is what matters. The foundation. So I respect that. I just want to let you know, so long as this continues to remain unaddressed, it's always going to feel like a fight that's far from you with the Three of Wands that you always feel compelled to return to, but you will not allow yourself to engage in. So... You have your reasons, okay? But that back and forth of I desire this and I still love this, but my feelings for frustration and the natural sense to block and to not engage with it are equally high. So I don't see one winning over the other. What you want and your frustration and wanting to maintain a block structure towards it are equally high. I don't see one having dominance. There's no healing attached to it. Every time you've looked at it and said, maybe I can put something to... Stop. Stop. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. But I also don't see how it's helping you. Uh, so long as one energy does not dominate over the other, you'll never fully be able to leave it alone. Because here's the thing. If we embrace this lover the way we would like to embrace ourselves, that energy would win and bring the other one down. If we really truly hated this connection and we wanted to fully reject it, that would win and shoot the other one down. These are, as far as I can tell, are entirely parallel. <laughs> so in other words, it, they knock each other out. They have nowhere to go. So that frustrating connection will remain as such so long as one part of your energy is always in tandem to the other. Okay, I just want to see you work through it in some way. You don't fully hate this connection, but you also feel the need to uphold the block that's there. You still desire it, and then you get mad that you still desire it. Okay, I'm not seeing any progress right here in this particular segment. And when you had the opportunity to, temperance, I'm like, oh, cancer's going to do something. They're going to show me healing the way they handled this situation, which I see as your progress and one of the reasons why you're empowered you went no 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 i take my natural sense of temperance and wanting to soothe my emotions into my foundation 
that works for me. So in other words, you use your foundation and use it as a priority to cool you off when you think about this connection. And I understand that. Okay? It's just... I understand that you throw yourself into something else in order to soothe this conflict. But it's going to create eventually what you call the band-aid effect. It's only going to satisfy you so much. You haven't shown me one way or the other what you want to do with the connection or to put any sort of resolve towards it. Okay. Let's see that magician. Okay. Let's see that magician, please. Let's see that magician, please. You have your reasons and you don't have to scream at me, honey. It's, it's just one of those things. I want you to feel better. I don't want you to stay stuck in this where there are no dominant feelings to tell you what direction to take. Um, I, I just I want to see you personally work through it more, that's all. You know? It's a lingering, unresolved, I shouldn't deal with it kind of thing. But um, when you reflect on it, you feel compelled to, and then you get mad all over again. So I just want something in you to win. That's all. Okay. The magician. The magician. Show me that magician, please. All right. Show me that magician, please. The five of cups, the nine of pentacles, the ace of pentacles. Yeah, and here's the reason why I want you to resolve it is because it's, even though there's that disappointment there, which you admit, it's echoes of the past. You're saying it's old pain, that it's just unresolved. So I got news for you, honey, whether you know it or not, you are manifesting a solution. Just be careful that I don't think you're aware of it, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, I didn't see it applied to the process of this. It's almost like it's happening behind your back. You would like a solution. And you are actually manifesting a solution from this person. You're kind of saying it's for them to come to me. And you might be correct from your point of view. Okay. I'm just, I'm the one saying you feel like you're stuck in neutral in this one. You can't shift the gears on this one. You're saying if anything, quote unquote, happens... It's a peace offering from that person. Whoever represents that nine of pentacles here, that strong sense of self, individuation, singledom, freedom, whatever it is. You're saying you would like it to come from them and that you would like it to come from an admission of sadness. I'm sorry I caused this pain, that kind of thing. And you want it to be real and you want it to be genuine. I understand. Um, that's why I kind of see you when you think about how your energy rises towards this and you desire it, but you're mad at it. Okay, there is a manifestation taking place behind that conscious level of awareness that says, more or less, I deeply manifest or desire that they come to me with a sense of I'm sorry or, you know, apology or I deeply regret and demonstrate some sort of peace offering. Okay, I don't know if you'll get that. Because you seem to be frustrated to this day while well, you still desire it. So I don't know. And maybe they will in time. I don't know. I don't know. I would like to see, though, if you want to take that manifestation seriously, you'd have to first acknowledge that you're doing it. Okay? And then second, heal yourself within yourself about this connection, what it meant to you, where what happened and why, where the argument and the frustration and the blockage came from. And then you might have a better insight about what that manifestation means to you if it ever showed up in the 3D. Because there's a good chance, even if it did show up, you could reject it if you don't understand what it means. Especially if you have unresolved issues of anger and frustration. I'm not saying you don't have reason to. Of course you do. But you haven't shown me deep reflection about learning from it and what it meant to you and all that other stuff. Okay. It may or may not be in time. Okay, but if you really want this, acknowledge it. And work through the process for yourself first before trying to attach a work through it process with someone else. Everything begins with itself. Okay? Um, there you go. 
It's not an insult, guys. I just want you to be prepared because if you're manifesting, whether you know it or not, something's going to come through eventually. And if you want to be in a position to take that with a certain level of grace and dignity and, you know, on any of that, you got to be aware of it. And it could be you that provides the solution. Keep that in mind. If you really want this to come through in some way, it might be you that provides the solution. When we try to manifest behaviors from the other person, the universe has a funny way of saying, absolutely, it just needs to come from you. You're the one who wants it. Okay. We cannot control the people's behaviors. And we can desire behaviors from another person. But that usually means we need to take a look at ourselves. It's like, if I want it that bad, it's probably on me to provide the solution. And that in and of itself is a form of manifestation. But then we get back into a place of shutting it down, right? All right. Just FYI. Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands. I lecture because I care. I want people to be aware of their time, energy, and efforts, and why, and the motivation, and that tends to solve a lot of problems. Okay. All right. Let's see that Ten of Wands. Let's see that Ten of Wands. Let's see that Ten of Wands. Show me that Ten of Wands. Okay. The Fool. The Tower. The Hermit. Good. Good, good, good. I'm seeing what almost looks like a spontaneous decision for you about that thing that's been weighing on you, going back to your opening. You're saying, you know what? I know what the right thing to do is. Um, I'm not going to try to keep healing this or carry the weight of it. I think it's finito. I agree with you. I completely agree with you, to be honest with you. Whatever this is, if it had... It, quick solution by now or any sort of solution by now based on time, energy, and effort, you would know. I think whatever this Ten of Wands exceeds its purchase value, you know what I'm saying, is not worth it. It's not worth it to keep it going. I, it, it almost looks like a spontaneous decision in April. It's kind of like, okay, I'm going to end this. Whatever this is, it's done. It's done. It doesn't work. I figured it out. I know how I feel about it. I've seen the results. I got it. And I think you do. Uh, so while it looks spontaneous, <laughs> it's actually based on wisdom and insight that was just dying to come through with the hermit there. So Ten of Wands clarified by the fool, the tower, the hermit. So while others to others on the outside looking in, they'll be like, what is cancer doing? That is so random. It is so spontaneous. No, 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 no. The solution was here the whole time. Your empowered self saw it. The, the situation for what it was revealed itself. Trust me on this. Your hermit, like I said, he was just dying to claim this territory as like... You're good. You don't need to try to fix this anymore. Just leave it be. It, it's done. Whatever this is, done. It's it's played its part. So we know then what that world represents. We're going to go ahead and skip that. Let's take a look at the Eight of Cups. We're going to go ahead and cycle that particular effort out and whatever it is it represents. All right, let's see this Eight of Cups, please. Show me this Eight of Cups. Show me that Eight of Cups. Oh, boy, it's picking up now. Who knows what that is, honey? Participation in something that proves kind of futile. Okay. And I like how you consolidated your feelings towards it and, and you took in other people's feelings into consideration. Again, the Empress is there, of course. That's absolutely something the Empress would do. But the result is the result is the result. If it's one less Ten of Wands for you to carry, so be it. You know? If you're going to have a Ten of Wands, have a Ten of Wands by your choice. Know what's worth the burden. Some things are. Some things are not. Whatever this is doesn't produce or it fails to. All right. It requires participation. It's time to stop participating in it. All right. Let's see the state of cups, please. Show me the state of cups. Show me the state of cups. Show me the state of cups. The sun. The emperor. The magician. Okay. That's what I was looking for. The acknowledgement of that manifestation. I was wondering if I was going to see a follow-up on that or what. 
Eight of Cups. So we clarified by the sun, the emperor, the magician. Um, I know you tried to remain uninvolved with this, and you even kind of manifested that they would come to a solution for you and show, and show remorse and, you know, remittance and all that. I know, I know. Um, but there's something about that that you realized, if that's what I need so bad, it should probably come from me. I should probably take charge of it. And I have to agree, it is indeed your manifestation. So you can leave your manifestation in the hopes, dreams, cares, and desires of someone else, or you can take ownership of them and say, if I want it that bad, the truth is the manifestation needs to come from me. And I agree. You know, I, I see people, I, I want them to do this, that, and the other, and then they're always left in want and disappointment. And that's typically something in ourselves, ego, maybe pride getting in the way, saying they need to do this, that, and the other. And they fail to do this, that, and the other. And it's like, but I haven't talked to them in 10 years. They should know. Well, no. It's the proof of manifestation that everything begins with the self. If you want it that bad, if it means that much to you, typically what has to be done has to be generated from within. It is in that position in this respect. If I want it done, I got to do it myself. And there's times when that's problematic. And but in this respect, it's dead on bang. Um, I know you tried to remain neutral about it, eight of cups, and emotionally distant, but it wasn't working for you, because it turns out your manifestation is important to you. I know you said it was their responsibility, but come to find it's yours. I'm not saying false guys. Do not confuse how I read the cards. What's here today? with designation of faults. That's not how tarot works. That's pride and ego getting in the way. I'm not saying it's your fault or responsibility. I'm saying manifestation principles stand as such. If it's important to you, then it comes from you. Not delivered by the universe. Here you go, cancer. Here's that thing you've been wanting forever. Or the other person. I've been waiting on you to say apologize for 20 years. And by then you're not going to want it. If it means that much to you, the activity and the true emotional origin of it needs to come from you, and thus you create your manifestation. So here I see you. You went from an empress carrying understanding empowerment to, okay, I'm the emperor. It's another form of empowerment, but it's much more direct. And it's the sun, the emperor, the magician. I'm seeing you take ownership of that manifestation and kind of rewriting your efforts out of a place of emotional numbness. I don't care. I'm not into this. It doesn't mean anything to me to taking full ownership of that manifestation. It's like it needs to come from me. And to be honest with you, I see you being successful with it with the sun. In other words, it feels correct to you because it is. Back here, when we weren't entirely aware of our manifestation efforts, it came from a place of fragmentation. Okay, like I said, I didn't see any dominant side of you winning that argument with your lover there. Um, you'll find your footing on this one. And then you will proceed accordingly. What that looks like, I couldn't say. I have no idea. Okay. I don't know, but I just see that you feel a lot more consolidated and empowered instead of feeling helpless about this situation. That's because it came from you the real origin of them. I'm not saying that they don't want it to. Perhaps they do. You wouldn't know because you were expecting them to deliver your manifestation. But now that you're in charge of your manifestation, it feels a lot different because it is. It feels a lot more empowering to accept the truth of the origin as opposed to assigning it to someone whom, as far as I can tell you, are not physically connected to. Okay. Come what may, I don't care. I'm just glad that you took charge of the situation. You needed to. It was for you. It was your manifestation. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, please? Oh, I know. Things like these are frustrating, guys, because they're not straightforward. I just know the more important it is to somebody, it usually needs to come from that person. Then you'll have an answer. It's our soulmate? Well. Uh, 
If English is not your main language, okay, let's say it's, it's your second language, and your language, what is your equivalent for the word duh? Put that in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Only a soulmate could drive you that crazy. So, okay, what else, please? Creates that old push and pull, eh? Being open to receive an apology. Oh, shit. Don't you love it when the universe just pushes back on people? You're like, I am totally open to receive their apology. Yeah, but do they know that, though? The reason why I'm going to go ahead and assume that this is a dual frustration effort. First of all, you're soul bonded, soulmates. Automatically, you both have grievances. Automatically, you both have unresolved issues. Whatever it is that you could throw at them, they could probably give it back to you, especially since your energy is like this. I both desire it. It frustrates me at the same time. They could probably say something similar. Okay? Uh, so in that respect, though, whoever wants to put some traction into this connection is the one that's actually tasked to open up. Somebody needs to open up in order to receive. And then an apology most likely can work both ways since you probably both feel like you're entitled to one. We didn't do a backtrack history today, guys. I just know that because you didn't, I didn't see you process it one way or the other in terms of learning, insight, and healing, it tells me you're both unresolved in many ways, okay? I'm not taking sides here, guys. It's just what's on the table, all right? And typically, apologies work both ways. You ever been in that situation? I'm sorry, and the other person's like, me too. But prior to that, you were like, you were raising pitchforks. <laughs> you were doing stretches. Oh, I'm going to da-da-da-da-da-da-da. But if somebody drops the apology and the other person's, their shoulder drops, they relax, and they're like, oh, me too. You see what I'm saying? I think that's what I'm looking at here today, but a little bit more blown out. <laughs> okay. The Ace of Pentacles, there it is, the higher self-activation, the Hierophant and the Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, the Hierophant never delivers an Ace of Pentacles unless he means it. So there it is. There's That's what I'm talking about. There's the authorization of the higher self. If you want it that much, may it come from you. Okay? That way, if your manifestation shows up, it shows up correctly. But it might be you that has to deliver it first, taking ownership of it, higher self-activation. If this person's an asshole, they're an asshole. We're not talking about that person. We're not talking about a toxic person. We're not talking about a poor situation. Why would I encourage you to do that? Don't take it to that space. I'm talking about something went down between you and someone significant. And you probably both have very similar desire, attraction, but also unresolved feelings at the same time. That's what I'm talking about. And that's the reunion of your soul tie. No shit. Um, it's, it's, it, that's what we're talking about today. We're not talking about, you know, he stole $10,000 or she did this, that, and the other and ran. I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm talking about this. It could be worked through. You have the skill sets to do it. I know what I've seen you do it. And congratulations for you for dropping whatever this thing is that's clearly not working in the 3D, but once more has nothing to do with this situation. Okay, like I said, you shifted gears on me, which is fine. I like interesting readings. Okay. Okay, yeah, a bit much, but that's all right. The main male. Some of you identify as the guy. Okay. Somebody's offering that message. The main male, the guy, is going to drop the message. So you're either the main guy and you're watching this, you're going to drop that message. Or... If you resonate with this and you expect a message from that main guy, again, expectations in check. The person who's manifesting the most accurately in terms of healthy desire, strength of will and empowerment will be the one to put it forward. After that, it takes two. All right. Poverty. Okay, impoverishment. We'll see. Uh, I didn't see anything too much of that. Oh, no, the poverty to this particular situation. Like I said, nothing is bearing fruit in that. It's too stagnant. It's too stagnant. And that's what poverty covers here, guys. It's a lack. Okay. Our needs are not being met here. Despite best efforts, the needs are not being met. Okay. To whatever that is. Uh, family tree. 
Stability, I know that's important to you. I saw it over here in your Ten of Pentacles. And that's typically how you soothe yourself, and I don't blame you for that. But it's not going to replace the soothing effect that is needed between yourself and that soul tie. Okay? All right. On the distant horizon, not too far out from now. Mm -hmm. Three, five, one, seven, thirty-seven. You guys, I hope this helped you. Put in the comments as you see fit. Take care. Be well.